Hi, good morning. It is Friday. Is it the 12th? It is the 12th of March 2021. Uh, my name is Steve Pugh. It is currently 8.59. It's about to be 9 o'clock. Uh, welcome. I hope you've had a really good week this week. Um, for me, personally, it's been a really busy week. I think it's been my busiest week of the year, but in a good way, not a bad way. Um, th there's always a distinction between good, busy and bad, busy, but this week's been good, busy, which is which is great. Uh, so welcome. This is the live stream, which I currently do once a week. Um, I launched a business course called the Roadmap MBA, and it's all about real world business education to help people take the next step. And that could be in their business if you're a business owner who has a team and you're looking to make more money and take the business forward or even in your career kind of learning what to do next that kind of thing so what i kind of do is that there's a whole business course which comes with a, a 216 page textbook which looks like this and there's loads of online uh, videos and that kind of thing which you can you know look on and use and that kind of thing i apologize if you can hear some hoovering because it's the cleaner in the corridor which isn't ideal but i'm going to crack on anyway um, and yeah, so what I do every Friday morning is that throughout the week, people either WhatsApp me or linked at me and send me different questions that they have about their genuine kind of business or career. And the idea is that it's a great chance to get some independent advice on what to do next, how to move forward. And that's what these sessions are all about. Um, so the other thing that we have as well is a chat feature. So hopefully touch some wood if on YouTube or LinkedIn or any of the, you know, any of the others that you actually write a comment, it should pop up. And it's that kind of live Q&A thing. Normally people ask me about camera and lighter setups, uh, which is great as well. But if you've got any questions, please send them in. Or likewise, you can use questions at roadmapmba.com. So in terms of the questions and stuff that I've got lined up for today, a really important one, which I think will actually re uh, resonate with a lot of different people, is actually how do you get your value recognized in an organization? This is a really topical one and I've been there myself. And actually, I think what helps is that because I've been both that person that was really ambitious and wanted to do stuff and didn't feel that they were really getting recognized, but also being the person who was the MD or whoever to kind of be in charge of that process. Um, hopefully it's, you know, I'm going to try and give some value on that one. The second question is actually, how do you find the time? Um, so this is a really funny one that <laughs> there's no easy answer to it, but I'm going to cover that as well. And that's how do you find the time for personal development? or to work on your business to help it grow. Uh, next is how should I grow? And we're gonna to touch on, it's the classic thing where a lot of people have a business, but they might plateau at a certain point. And then it's what you do next to really make the best, most sensible, accurate next step forward. So we're gonna to touch on that. And then last but not least, there's a question to do with uh, something called lag measures. So within the book, and actually I'm gonna jump on that one first, just cause it goes into it. Uh, so let me one cup of tea. It's also given the chance for the hoovering to stop, so that's good. <clears throat> okay, so in the book, and I believe it's pages 18 and 19, we have different concepts called lead actions and lag measures. The idea is it's that how when you set any target goal, no matter what it is, it might be to lose weight, it could be to increase sales, it could be whatever it is. There's two sides to it. The one that people traditionally focus on is the lag measure. So that is how much weight you've lost or did you hit your sales target or whichever. That's the main thing that people focus on. But actually that really misses a key trick because like for, you know, for instance, say we're losing weight. It's one that everyone understands. Yes, everyone might want to lose five kilos or two stone or whatever the, the kind of target is that you want to do. But just having the, the goal doesn't help you get there. So what you really want to do, and it's something we do in the textbook, and actually, I'll show you, I've got the page out, where is it? It's here, so it's page 18 and 19, we kind of break it down. And likewise, there's also things that you can do for your career, which kind of help as well. But what you do is that you break down the uh, end goal into a series of actions, so you really kind of understand what it is. I'm going to give two examples, because this actually came in from a guy called Joe, who's a professional boxer. So what I wanted to do was give him a real example of something that he'll hopefully resonate with, that how we move forward. So Joe, I believe, has a championship fight coming up soon. So his goal is to win the championship belt. I love to draw, but I'm terrible. Anyway, so Joe's goal is to win his next fight. But, all of, you know, that's, he can wish that, but actually there's lots of things that he needs to do to actually uh, win the championship, win his next fight, that kind of thing. So you've got the fight, 
and that would be So the actual achieving the goal is the lag measure. It's called a lag because it happens after the, you know, the event. It's the, it's the thing that comes at the end. What will help Joe achieve that goal to actually win his next fight? That's his training. So this is the hundreds and hundreds of hours of when he goes out to runs to work on his fitness, when he works on the strength, when he works on the speed. And it's all of those different things that for Joe, or a professional boxer, he might train five times a week. And I'm, I'm not, I love boxing, but I'm not a big boxing expert, but like in his pre-camp training to really get up to peak fitness for the fight, that might last 16 weeks. So the lead action for Joe to win the championship belt is actually to make sure that he trains five times a week for the full 16 weeks and follows the instructions of his nutritionist and his trainer and that kind of thing. So these are the lead actions. I'm going to get a different pen. So these are things that we can control. This will lead to this, which has then happened after the fact. So in terms of the lead action, as long as Joe knows if he turns up for training every day, he's a lot more likely to actually achieve his goal of winning the championship belt. So in this instance, that is the lag measure and these are the lead actions. Uh, hopefully that's a good example. Last week I broke down a sales pipeline, which was all to do with how the goal was to get a million uh, pounds revenue in your business. And actually we broke that all the way down to, I think it worked out to nine phone calls a day in the example. But the idea being that the million pound sales is the lag measure and the number of phone calls per day is the lead action. So Joe, hopefully that answers your question. If it doesn't, drop me a message. And again, there's all of the, the videos and the content online. And the, why this is also really useful, because it means that as I learn and improve, I can improve the materials to make sure I explain things properly. So hopefully that's cool. Hi, Simon. I always have Simon comment every week. He's my, uh, <laughs> I guess one of my top fans, which is good. And the one thing that I noticed last week, I tried to set up a new chat function, which goes on the side of the screen, which is there. And I didn't think it worked and it did. I just changed some of the settings, but no, Simon, thank you. And again, anyone that comments, it should pop up and I'll happily ask any questions and that kind of thing. And Simon, just whilst I've got you, we'll get you on in future weeks because I do like doing these as a Q and A actually with a live guest. And we talk through your business and your site hustle and stuff as well. <clears throat> Okay, so next. <clears throat> I'm gonna tackle the easiest one next because it's, the question is, how do you find time to do your personal development or your professional development or actually to work strategically on your business? So the, the Roadmap MBA is a 216 page course which goes into great detail about everything that you might need to know to basically help your business move forward or in your career <coughs> excuse me got a cough in your career actually learn the skills to help make the next step and that you can use it in all different ways but the brutally honest answer is if you don't make time for yourself and there's a classic thing it is actually in the book is that you must therefore prioritize other things over your personal development and it's that it's the really hard answer that nobody wants to give everyone wants to give the magical 10 minutes a day whatever and actually that is true you, if you were to give 10 minutes a day to actually work on different things you know that could kind of work but the truth is you have to prioritize what's really important to you in life and in, in your career and that kind of thing um, that yes you could so i watch youtube videos more than i probably should i'll be honest but actually you need to look at what you do and how you actually spend your time every day, how much time you spend on Instagram, Twitter, etc. And actually, if you prioritize certain things such as want to upskill yourself so that you can sell more, so you can get the next promotion and get a bonus or whichever, you have to kind of put the time in to do that. Likewise, in the last example, if you want to become a professional boxer, you have to put the time in, you have to get, you know, build your skills, you have to do everything you need to do. But then the other thing that is true about business, 
is that you're also competing against everyone else that wants to do the same. So the truth is that if you're, so the last guy was Gemma Fox, a professional boxer, XGB, brilliant guy, love him. If he's training six hours a day, say, and you train half an hour a day, but you've got the same ambition, it's tough, but he's probably gonna win. And it's the same in business that some people will want to set up their own shop or consultancy or whichever, but actually, if, if they're only kind of half arsed it and not making the time because it's not a priority to them, they're less likely to succeed to, than anyone else. And this is the thing that people always say, I don't have time because I've got the kids or whichever. But actually, if you properly break down, I've seen people do videos on this, to actually, you know, account in your day, what time do you get up? How does it work? How do you fill your day? What do you do on your lunchtime? When you get home from work, do you play on the Xbox for two hours? And it's when you, when you kind of break that down, but also do it over a week. Even if you just did your personal development on weekends for half an hour a week, I actually think you'd do quite well. But the truth is that if you don't choose to make time, what that's actually doing is it shows that it's not a priority to you, um, which is not a very nice answer to give, but it is true. And I think actually if you can find something which you're passionate about or you have a goal that you want to achieve, I choose to work probably... I wouldn't say I work seven days a week, but I'm always, my mind's always turning and I'm actually working on a lot of stuff all the time. But that's because this is my hobby. I, I love it. It's my passion. I love working with different people. So it doesn't necessarily feel like work. So it could be a sign that you're maybe you're in the wrong career or job or you're just not the right place now. But actually it's the hunger to want to do more and want to develop. It's the classic, I'm sure you've seen the film Rocky, where someone hits rock bottom and he just wants to kind of fight his way out of it. That fight involves some effort. And rightly or wrongly, yeah, it, it, that's the, the, the answer for how do you find the time? You find the time through actually prioritizing and acknowledging how you spend your hours every day. Um, and then you choose what to do. And if you choose to do Netflix or whichever, that's absolutely fine. But you might fall behind against people that don't. So there you go. Any more questions? Hi, Joe. Joe, I answered your thing before. I don't know if you caught it, but I'm going to clip it up. It's going to go onto YouTube. And again, we'll have a chat. And I know I said I'd get you on as a guest in future weeks as well. But I purposely went for a, a championship belt. And likewise, we'll get you on to plug the fight as well. Help yourself some more tickets. Okay, next, I'm going to go on to a really important one. And this is actually something, it was a request that came in. And I've been there. And I actually think this is probably more applicable to most people than you might ever think. And the question is... How do you how do you get recognized for the value that you bring to organ to an organization? Um, and this is really tricky because it, there's different sides to it. You have the value that you believe. Actually, I'm going to draw this out. So I'm going to write it out. How do I get So it's how do I get recognized in my business or career to basically get what you feel you deserve in terms of, um, you know, reward and value and recognition and stuff. So there's two sides to it. There's you. So this is what you think you deserve. And it's really funny because I haven't been again on different sides of this coin. That isn't always an accurate uh, reflection of reality if that makes sense and then you have the decision maker who i'm just going to call boss in this instance but it could be whoever your views and your boss's views might be different and part of the challenge is is that people often think one of my guests on the podcast a few weeks ago was a guy called chris beavers actually it was back in july but i recapped his best advice a few weeks ago and one of the things that he realized was that going through his career, especially in his younger kind of years, was the thought that someone was going to help him out, someone was going to recognize his talent and that they would give him an opportunity and he could run with it. And I probably had something similar. Um, and he kind of found that that just didn't happen. You, you always have to look out for yourself, uh, look after your own kind of best interests, but do it, in, do it in the right way and do it like properly, which is what I'm going to try and cover. But the point is, if you don't put the hard work and the effort in, kind of similar to the last one, nobody's going to help you out for free if that makes sense so what i've done just to help me because again this is kind of live i've put down five little points which i'm going to help kind of guide me and then i'm going to write them on the board and my scribble will probably be ineligible but hopefully it'll still kind of help 
So the first one is actually you need to understand the aims and goals of the decision maker. So before you, you know, everyone has a job, well not everyone, but you get my point. Everyone has a job and they feel that they should maybe get paid more or have better terms and conditions or whichever. The one challenge you've got, you have and a, a business has is that most business owners would love to pay people more and reward them more, etc. But they rarely have to look at how do I pay for it? Because if a business makes less money or loses money or goes bust, everyone suffers. So that's not good. And it's actually, it's a very difficult challenge to support a growing business, <clears throat> support people's ambitions to help them grow. But then actually as a business, not increase your overhead so that the axe above your head, which is your overhead every month, which is something you have to pay, doesn't get bigger to the point where at some point it breaks and kills you all. And there are different ways and means to do that. But in terms of this example, for you, it's really important to understand the aims and goals of your decision maker. And what you're essentially trying to do with that is that essentially you want to chat to them, find them at a good time and basically say to them and listen to them. We cover sales techniques in the book, but basically say, look, I, I want to help with the business. I want to add more value and actually ask them, how can I add more value to the business? And actually it's that kind of thing that when you actually do that, you can align your interests so that they know that they have someone in their business, which is on their same team that will help them achieve their goal. So I'm going to get number two is ask. Ask how you can help because it's a really important thing that we, none of us know what's going on in someone else's life or business or whichever, but actually sometimes if someone just said to you, look, what else can I do to help? I really want to help us grow the business. They might have a perfect project in mind that actually what that does <clears throat> You've got aligned interests where actually, you know, you're on the same page and what you're trying to do is get the boss, get the person to actually visualize and see you as someone on their team, excuse me, that actually they see you as a positive force for good to help them do what they're trying to do. But the real output of that is add, add more value. And this is where most people in their jobs will, you know, to be honest, most people kind of plateau at a certain point, they get into their job, they do their stuff, and they, they don't necessarily want to work harder to get paid more money, they almost feel if they just stay in the same job for a longer time, therefore, they should become more senior and basically get paid more. The, the truth kind of is, is that that doesn't work, you have to add more value. But actually, in this process, the other thing which is really important, which actually came back from some feedback I got the other day, is actually how important it is, the people side of the business. And this is where you want to both get to know and listen, like properly listen to the decision maker or the people in your team to see how you can add more value. But actually in that conversation, and if you approach it with humility to basically say, look, I wanna help, I wanna do more, how can I add more value, what problems can I fix? In that conversation, there's a, something called commitment and consistency, which is on page 122. And what you're looking to do there is almost, they're called micro agreements, but get the other person in that open and honest conversation to say, look, I hope you recognize that I add value to the business. I want to do more. How can I help? And I'm almost certain that that person will go, yeah, yeah, of course I recognize your value. I know you work hard. I know you do all these things. We can do this. But the point is, if you can get the two things, one, I'm going to get a different pen, is the the recognition of stuff you've done in the past and what you currently bring to the team through the honest conversation to ask, look, what can you do to help the boss or help the person grow? That will go a long way. But the other one is the added value conversation. And then basically, once you have the ability to add more value to organization, and you've actually got the recognition from the decision maker who kind of controls your destiny, combine these two, when it then comes around to a discussion about your pay or your annual PDR, which is your personal development review, 
you can demonstrate the added value and the stuff that you bring. And then likewise, for someone I know quite well, if you are a salesperson, or even if you're not on your um, managerial type positions, you'll still have KPIs and measurements and stuff. Demonstrate and almost agree with them. Look, if I can hit this KPI, will I be considered for whichever? And it's those kind of things that what you're doing is get an agreement along the step. You've agreed the plan and approach for how to get to your goal. These are your lead actions in some ways. Um, but actually, in some cases, and I've been there, you will have bosses and people that just don't, it's not that they don't like you, but they they don't value your talent. And the other side to it as well is that if you get to a point where your, your ceiling is capped, you don't feel there's anywhere else to go and you've still got ambitions to do more, um, you can always look and basically see if someone else would value your talent more. I wouldn't recommend this. Um, often people just, your boss might be so uh, busy with doing their own thing that they just hadn't really thought of this, but it's always worth kind of keeping in mind. But actually, if you can then honestly, you've asked the question about how can I add more value, you've worked hard, you've hit your KPIs, you've done all this stuff, and they still choose not to recognize it, the, the option always is there to make other decisions, which could be to leave or go somewhere else. Um, that is kind of the, the honest business answer to it. Um, but likewise, when I mentioned at the start about how it's really important for a business to be able to pay for any increased salaries or whichever, this is where the added value comes in that you've kind of proven, you've created the mechanism to make that happen as opposed to just asking for a pay rise. So I hope that was useful. And last but not least, before I jump on to the last question, as I say, if you have any questions or comments, please drop them in to the chat. And the last but not least is basically how should I grow a business? Okay, back to the blue. Actually, how should I grow And the reason why I say should is because this varies day by day for lots of different people. And it's something that you always have to keep in mind, but it's a valid question. And actually it's a funny one because it's different for every single person in the world. Everyone's business is at a different phase. And what's really important is to really understand where you are before you decide to do something else next. One of the mistakes that a lot of people make is that they have their core business and they might feel that they're trying to bring in new revenue streams and do all this exciting new stuff, which again, we cover in the course. But the truth is they haven't maximized the basics first. The first one is maximize what you have. So if you have a core market I'm going to pick, say you're a recruitment company in the northeast of England. You might have a pool of customers, which is, you've got 200 customers. I'm pretty sure in the northeast of England, there is something in the region of 42,000 businesses. And the challenge you have is that when you actually whittle down your core market, rather than trying to chase um, customers in London or Manchester or wherever, really kind of maximize and you know, make the most of what you have. In the book, we actually call this one jump, not two, and it's how you can diversify your business with reduced risk. But it's one of those core things that actually, if there's a core group of people that you can support, try and maximize that before you try and do new stuff. And that's always the thing that you should do first and exhaust every avenue before you put time and resource into developing new products, that kind of thing. The second one is about gain feedback. One of the most valuable things you can ever do is actually say to your existing target market, so your existing customers, is there anything else that we could do to help? What other challenges do you have in the business? Is there anything that you would like to buy or that we can provide that we don't currently do? And actually just gaining feedback on your core business that your core client might have a problem which you can solve and we can get quite clever about how we do that but actually just gaining feedback from your core market to say look is there anything else that we can do for you it's a really really valuable kind of ask and then last but not least
is relating to the last point is actually all to do with either bolt-ons. So that's when you add on something to your core existing business, something extra. Uh, you can cross-sell. So again, cross-sell different services into the same customer. So you as a business might have five different product offerings. Customer A only buys two of them. Could you sell the other three? And it's a really good kind of way to do it. And then last but not least is actually upsell. So the customers that you currently have that might do a thousand pounds a month with you or 10,000 pounds a month, can you actually increase that to 12 to 13, whichever? And all of these things almost in this order, but again, they all kind of relate, is the first thing to consider before you start to chase new, sexy, exciting things. Um, in my chat with Paul Lancaster yesterday, we spoke about how it's really important to maintain focus. So there will always be shiny new things to hit. In one of my past interviews, there was a guy called Chris Payton who said, when you've got a new hammer, a shiny new hammer, everything looks like a nail. And the idea being people often get bored and it gets to a certain point where you think, oh, I want to do something new. I want to try something completely different. When actually, from a purely business point of view, if you just focus on the basics, focus on you know, how do you maximize what you've got? How can you get customer feedback and then actually cross sell and upsell your existing customers? That's probably the most important thing to do. And again, once you have that, then and you've maximized that and you've got a really good market share and you, you know you've kind of done the best you really you know feel you can with that then we can look at diversifying into new geographies or sectors or whichever and again we cover that in the textbook but the idea is most people for most businesses really nail the basics and then kind of move forward so what time are we on we are on 9 26. Uh, i appreciate anyone that joins us today it's been really interesting this actually because one of the things that for my own business is that I like to listen and gain feedback. One of the things that's really interesting, and actually I'm still trying to figure out the best way to do this, is that it's to provide the options for people to join you live and ask questions and whichever. But actually most people have really busy lives. They do school runs and they have kids and they have jobs and they have meetings and they have loads of different stuff and I kind of do too. So it's the, the, the ability to be there when you need them but actually have the mechanism that someone can ask questions today or tomorrow in the middle of the night, whichever, and I'll still answer them, but it works around them. And I'm still kind of going through this uh, process with, with the course and with my own business and that kind of thing. Um, hopefully these are useful and actually I always clip it up and then send it through to the people who asked the question. If you've got any questions at all to do with your business or career or you kind of want to make the next step, but you want to do it in your own time, um, you know, again, because everyone's kind of busy, that's where the Roadmap MBA kind of fits in. You can pick it up for two minutes or two hours, go into as much or as little kind of depth as you want. But I genuinely believe this covers 99% of the stuff that 99% of the people kind of need to know to help make that next kind of step. So my name's Steve, it's Friday. I'm really excited for the weekend. As a personal kind of in-joke, people that know me, I always treat myself now to a McDonald's breakfast. That's my reward for kind of being brave enough to do these things because it's not always easy. But on my own kind of lead actions for the business, I know how important it is to create content, do the live streams, get the people confident with almost the, the understanding of just that they know they can ask questions, even though not necessarily anyone asks live it's still daunting on this kind of journey. And then one of the things that I try and do is I'm always very honest about documenting and sharing my own kind of journey because hopefully over time you'll see this evolve and develop. Um, and then maybe in five, 10 years time, you know, I might be where my kind of goals set. But I really appreciate your time. Have a wonderful weekend. A good luck to anyone that decides to work on their personal development. You can drop me a message anytime and I always respond as, you know, hopefully the guys kind of know. Uh, Joe, I appreciate the heads up. Uh, if you've got any questions, um, you know, stay in touch. And yeah, I'll speak to you soon. All right, cheers, guys. Bye-bye, bye-bye.